Hello and welcome to my video. Please do subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, so today um, I'm going to be talking or continuing to talk about uh, Harrogate Art Show to a point. Um, I'm going to be exhibiting there in two weeks time and uh, it's very exciting because it's the first time Contemporary Art Fairs, which is the group that put this show together, uh, it's the first time they've been in the north of England. So I have a stand there. So I do hope if you're local that you're able to join join me. And uh, if you contact me, if you haven't already got tickets, I can provide free tickets. You have to go online and, and, and book them. So anyway, what I wanted to talk about was something associated with that. And that is the fact that they have a charity event as part of it. And they ask artists to donate small uh, pieces of work on canvas. And that brings me to chat to you about something that I haven't talked about before. And that is... What do you do when you want to, you've got just one piece and you'd usually work in series? Um, and of course that, that can happen. You know, sometimes you just need an extra piece or whatever. And what happens? Um, how do you kind of manage that? So I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I've done it, uh, for this small piece, which isn't quite finished. And I'm going to do a little bit on camera today, but this is a small 20 by 20 and, uh, it's about the same, subject matter about the panoramic views and about those walks um and so that you have things close to you and then you have things far away and that whole business of a panoramic but of course this is square so it's not a kind of a long view so um i've kind of um, been a little bit risky in a way um but and i had those three panels that i was working on but essentially i've worked on this on its own um, although I've had that bank of knowledge and, 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 and that kind of going on. So what happened was about three weeks plus ago, I started working on this. My three panoramics at that point were well on their way, but they weren't finished and I was working on them. And I thought, oh my goodness, I've got to bring this one on board. Now, the reason why I did it like that was originally I was going to um, use another of my works and donate that. But because the art fair had provided these small 20 by 20 canvases, I thought, oh, no, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll do what they've asked. I'll, I'll, you know, work on the canvas that they've provided. And so that's what I started to do. And um, I just wanted to take you and I'm going to in the minute, I'll put the camera on the desk and show you how I'm, what I'm going to do, what I think is still needing to be done to this piece. Um, but essentially, how do you manage if you work in series and then for whatever reason, and there could be a number of reasons why you just need this one individual piece, how do you do that? So I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I've done it. And the way I've done it is to sort of have in mind those other um, works as reference to make sure I loosen up a lot and do it very regularly. So every time I work on this, I do a little piece on paper. And interestingly, my little quick um, thumbnails that I do on paper, I didn't revert to doing square pieces on paper. I kept them as panoramics because that was another thing for me. I thought, no, I've got to kind of get my head around. How do you actually translate this feeling of the expanse even in square format? And I hadn't done that before with panoramics. And so this was a little bit of a test for me. Um, but the other thing that is really important is to, you know, and the reason, one of the reasons working on series is so that you don't get precious with the one. You know, you move on, you move on, you move on. So I've been very, very uh, strict with myself over at any point when I work on this, I only allow myself 15 to 20 minutes at maximum and no longer and I walk away. And never do I put more than one layer on at a time. So even though I could argue, well, it's dry, I can do it. No, don't do that, walk away. And the, the useful thing about having this is that I've known I can build up the richness of layers. I've not been overwhelmed with, I've got 20 pieces and I've got to keep adding all these layers. It's just this one piece. And so every time I have a spare moment, I just work on it very quickly and usually it's much less than 20 minutes. 20 minutes is the absolute maximum. Usually it probably is five to 10 minutes if I've got the paint mixed already. 20 minutes is if I've got to kind of mix the paints. So that's another thing I've been doing. And the other thing I've been doing is making sure I don't just keep constantly adding and going round and round in endless circles. 
The advantage of going round and round in endless circles and adding and adding is that you do get a textural richness. The downside of, of doing it that way is that if you're not careful, you get into this pattern of going round and round and round in circles. So at a certain point, you have to say, no, is this working? Is this not working? If it's working, what's still needed? If it's not working, how do I change it? And I'm so I've been quite strict with myself over evolving this and asking myself those questions. But remembering the downside of obviously of, of asking those questions and very, being very targeted is that you can get quite tight. So it's keeping it loose and fresh. So I've been using bigger brushes or I've been, been doing it really quick and, and rough and ready and then standing back. So those are just some of the things whilst I'm stand, sitting here talking to you now that I've been doing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera on the desk. OK, so I hope that you can see uh, this. But what I thought was quite interesting is I've put these um, five um, thumbnails that I did very quickly and um, just around here so that you can see them. And I, I kind of, although I didn't actually have them physically in my viewing space and although I wasn't aware that I was using them directly, I think you can see the correlation between the works here and those images so that is quite interesting now i was i've been using the palette um that i i've been using for the panoramics my three um summer autumn panoramics because that made perfect sense to me because obviously it was a similar thing um what i'm doing here now is i'm quite happy now broadly with the composition but i wanted to add some textural effects and i wanted to add some splattering um just to give it some sort of surface texture um, because of the nature of what's happening in the landscape at this time of year and because I wanted to reflect some of that. So I'm just flicking the paint here now and I might well rub some of it off and all it is is a mixture of like I showed you in my colour mixing it's just the white with some yellow um, and I'm being quite liberal with it because what I probably will come and do is uh, wipe some of it off and see where it's working and where it isn't. And there's no, you know, there's no sort of fast rules to this one. I just go with what my instinct show tells me. My instinct tells me that I don't want it on this top bits, even though you could argue that that could be quite interesting. I might have some bleeding through there. But what I might actually do is I might, this might be a bit blunt, I might have to go and get, I'd quite like some lines coming through. Oh, that's not too bad. Sometimes you just have to try things. I kind of wanted some more lines. You can see the lines that were actually on previous layers there. And there's something about those lines connecting things. And I kind of want a little bit of bleed over, but not too much. Oh, that's not too bad. But if I get some of this white lines, and that's probably enough white lines, what I might take off is some, there seems to be too much stuff going on here with the layering. So sometimes you can just rub it in and it works. So quite like the idea of having you I'm always wanting to connect things, but I also like the idea of not having it everywhere. Um, that said, I might just put some over here um, just because it gives a sort of a, a certain feel then. And although I oh, took some off, it's a kind of a case of going back and forth now. Um, and once that's dry, then I'll come in and just work in some of the oil pastel, but it does need to be dry because otherwise I'm just going to make a, make a bit of a mess. I do quite like the fact that it's kind of in lots of places now, but not too much. Um, and I kind of like the fact that it's a bit unbalanced. So I might just leave that now. And then once it's dry, I'm probably 
think I'm kind of okay with the way it, it works now in terms of the different shapes, uh, the, the composition working. I've not got any bullseye going on too much, I don't think. Um, kind of happy with the detail down here and then something up there, but it's pushing back. And um, yeah, I'm going to wait till it's dry and then uh, I will come back in. Okay, so just to finish with, I wanted to just uh, mention about the oil pastels. So um, I often use these uh, to sort of add uh, brights and sparkles within the uh, painting. And um, as I, 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 I've been adding quite a few things already um, as I go, and these actually are, this turquoise that you see is actually a woody. Um, and it's a woody that's been, you know, fixed. I've added some on this layer, so I'll have to fix that. But the thing about the woodies is that they're water soluble, so they need fixing with a different fixative to the oil pastel. So often I'll have already fixed all of the the um, the things like woodies and ink tenses as I go. And then at the end, I use the oil pastel and then fix that with a particular fixative. So what I'm going to just do here is I've got an orange um, I've got a kind of a burnty browny colour and I've got a pink because I kind of want to add some splashes of pink that fit with this um, pink of the collage I've got. And although I've got a couple of woodies here, I'm, I'm probably not, unless I want some more turquoise, in which case I probably will c carry on with the woody. Um, that's what I'll probably, probably end up using. So um, anyway, here I go. Now, there's a bit of me that wants to put some orange in um, just because it'll add something different. Um, and I, I really like it with pink, actually. So, you know, it's sort of... And I don't have any formula for this. I just do what feels right. Um, Lexi agrees by the sound of it. As soon as I start talking, she wants to say something. Mm. So I'm just, you can probably just see what I'm doing. I don't want to add too much. I want to add some though. Some, some brightness up there. And it kind of rubs, if you do it sort of, if you don't like it when you've done it, you can just quickly rub it off. Um, I try, one thing I do do is I don't, I try having them going in different directions. So if I've got uh, quite a bit going in, in, say I've got quite a few long ones, I wanted to put some across. And then I might take that one away. So, but I might, might put one in that goes up because of the nature of it. So that's, it goes onto paper, it kind of goes a bit different, so. I think that's kind of perfect. That's plenty of the orange. I want to add some pink because I just want to kind of make that sort of connection with the existing pink of the collage papers. Okay, so I just thought I'd end by sharing with you where it's at now. As you can see, I have covered more of the left side up now with more of the lighter colour paint because I want to get this feeling of layering and I want to have a bit more of a tension between the sides. And so having that expanse of space there, I think works uh, better. And uh, I don't know if it's done yet, but um, I'm just going to keep hanging it on the wall and the painting wall and having a look, in, look at it and uh, maybe adding um, more, maybe not. But it's probably getting close to being done. I'm just going zooming in so you can see some of the detail. There's lots of layers in this one and there's sort of a, a sense of things being behind things so that you get a sense of the depth. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, there's more information on the Harrogate Art, Art Fair uh, in the notes and uh, some links. Uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.